Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, City Council hearing for land use. Uh, we're ready to start on, we have a quorum, right, Matt? Yeah, okay. Uh, we're ready to start on City Council Bill 20-0560, the purpose of permitting subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a single family dwelling unit to four dwelling units in the R7 zoning district on the property known as 2437 Madison Avenue, block 3421, lot 037, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat, and also granting variances from certain bulk regulations which is lot area size and the gross floor area per unit type requirements. Uh, I just want to state that um, all the public notice requirements have been met. And uh, uh, before we, I recognize the, the sponsor of the bill, Councilman Pinkett, uh, Matt, my staff person, Matt, you want to go over the, the uh, protocol? Or, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hearing. Yeah. Please be yourself until we start. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we get started with the hearing, I'll just go over a brief presentation on um, the procedures and functions for WebEx. Uh, so in the uh, lower center of your screen, uh, you should have um, uh, control shown here. Um, the first on the left is your microphone control. Um, please mute yourself whenever you're not speaking. Um, the second is the control for your video. Um, we ask that you turn on your video when you are speaking, um, but otherwise um, feel free to leave the video off. Uh, we have the uh, participants button, which will allow you to um, pull up a list of the um, panelists uh, who are in the hearing. Uh, the chat function, um, if you have a technical issue, um, you can use the chat function to uh, let the committee know. Uh, and more options, which we'll talk about uh, in a second. And finally, when you're ready to leave the meeting, um, the button with the X on it at the end will allow you to do that. Uh, under the more options function, uh, you have the um, option to raise your hand. Uh, when we get to public testimony, we'll ask that uh, members of the public who wish to speak uh, use this to let us know that they have testimony. Uh, for anyone who has downloaded the full version of WebEx to their computer, that um, the raise hand button may be in the lower right hand corner of the screen instead of under more options. And the top right hand corner are the uh, view options. I uh, have the presenter screen uh, with the participants view off, presenter screen with the participants shown below, or the uh, all, particip all participants in uh, the grid format option on the, on the right. And uh, a few best practices for WebEx hearings. Uh, try to find a quiet space with good light and a strong internet connection so you can be seen and heard. Uh, turn on video when you are speaking. Identify yourself before you speak. Mute yourself when you are not speaking. Uh, speak slowly and clearly. Be present. Uh, be patient. And wear headphones with a microphone to cut down on background noise if possible. Uh, public testimony for computer users will be uh, coordinated by the committee staff. And um, we ask that anyone who has joined us by computer use the raise hand function to indicate that you wish to testify uh, or that you have a question. And um, each speaker will be unmuted um, in their, their turn. And please state your name at the beginning of your testimony. Uh, for anyone who's joined by phone, um, we're not able to identify callers by name and there's no raise hand function. And so the committee staff will uh, unmute each uh, caller one by one. Uh, and you will hear two beeps when you're unmuted. 
Uh, if you do not wish to testify, um, please say so when you're unmuted. If you do wish to testify, uh, please state your name and then begin. And uh, if a caller is not understandable, uh, they'll be asked to call back. And Mr. Chair, would you like me to uh, do a roll call of the committee members before we proceed? Yes, let's do roll call. All right. Thank you. Uh, committee members, when I call your name, please uh, respond so we know that you're here. Uh, Chairman Reisinger? Here. And Vice Chair Sneed? I do not see Vice Chair Sneed on the list. Uh, Councilman Clark? Uh, here, Councilwoman, actually. Oh, I, th I apologize. Uh, Councilman Costello? President. Councilman Dorsey? Here. Councilman Pinkett? Present. Uh, Councilwoman Middleton? Present. And Councilman Stokes. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt, I just want to share with you and also with my committee members and the audience that Councilman Stokes uh, will not be attending right now. He has a prior commitment, but when he gets done, his prior commitment is other meeting that he'll join us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. So at this time, um, I'm going to call on the, the sponsor of the of the bill, Councilman Pinkett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on uh, City Council Bill 20-050-560, um, uh, 2437 Madison Avenue. Uh, conversion from a single family to four unit in the R7 zoning district. Um, when the property owner uh, developer came to me, I think uh, 2018, um, as I do with um, um, any rezoning, referred the owner to the community. And as a result, um, starting back in 2018, the owner began uh, discussions and conversations with the uh, community groups that represent Reservoir Hill. Uh, Reservoir Hill Improvement Council, the Upper Utah Madison Neighborhood Association, Friends of Reservoir Hill, as well as a joint committee of um, community leaders that come together to deal with zoning and land use issues. Uh, the initial proposal that was presented by the property owner was for six units, um, that the property would be redeveloped uh, to six units. Um, as a result of the conversations the, uh, that took about nine months, the uh, community agreed and the owner agreed on uh, redeveloping it to four units. Um, it's a three-story uh, property. So there would be a unit on each floor plus a unit in the basement, a 900 square foot unit in the basement with two full windows, um, just to put that on the record. And uh, so it would be four total units. And then um, being that parking um, is sometimes an issue in that particular section of Reservoir Hill. Um, that they would provide five parking spaces in the rear. Um, they would provide egress from each of the units to the rear um, from each floor. And as a result, uh, the Reservoir Hill Improvement Council, Upper Utah Madison Neighborhood Association, Friends of Reservoir Hill, and the Joint uh, uh, Zoning Committee all provided letters of support for this particular project. And so um, I want to thank you for hearing this bill and um, hope that uh, my colleagues will support the rezoning of this particular property. Thank you, sir. Yes, Councilman, we, we do have letters from those community groups that you just stated that support the uh, rezoning. Um, does any of, the, any of my colleagues on the committee or council people have any questions for the councilman? No? Okay. Thank you, Councilman. So at this time, we're going to go with uh, agency reports. Uh, painting department. Painting. Martin French. Thank you. <clears throat> Martin French for the Baltimore City Planning Department. At its regular meeting of August 20th of 2020, the Planning Commission considered this bill. The Planning Commission reviewed a staff report 
which recommended amendment and approval as amended of the bill and adopted the following resolution, nine members being present. Resolved that the Planning Commission finds in accordance with sec sections 5-308 and 5-406 of Article 32, which is the zoning code, that the conditions on which this application is based are unique to the property for which the variance is sought and are not generally applicable to other property within the same zoning classification. The unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty is caused by this code and is not being created by the intentional action or inaction of any person who has a present interest in the property. The purpose of the variance is not based exclusively on a desire to increase the value or income potential of the property. The variance will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity or substantially diminish and impair property values in the neighborhood. The variance is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the code. The variance is not precluded by, will not adversely affect any urban renewal plan, the city's comprehensive master plan, or any historical and architectural preservation district. And the variance will not otherwise be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, or welfare, or be in any way contrary to the public interest. And further resolved that the Planning Commission does not concur with the recommendation of its departmental staff, it recommends that City Council Bill 20-0560 be passed by the City Council without amendment or with an amendment adding a variance of off-street parking requirements should the City Council determine it to be appropriate. Planning Commission heard uh, <clears throat> considerable testimony concerning this bill and recognizing that an agreement had been reached with the neighborhood associations in question and recognizing the importance of this building to the historic integrity of the Utah Place Madison Avenue Historic District recommends approval of the bill as it was presented. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so, uh, Martin, the only question I have just to go back is that bill passes to zoning from conversion from single to four. Did you state that it that it wouldn't affect the, the health or the safety of this project? Is that what you said? Just yes. Yes, that is okay. part of the resolution of the Planning Commission. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any of my colleagues, committee members have a question for Mr. French? Going once, going twice? No? Martin, thank you. Be careful out there. Uh, You're welcome. We will now go to BMZA, which has no objection. Is anyone from BMZA? Yeah, this is leaving a do for the BMZA. Um, the BMZA stands by its report saying no objection to the passage of this bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go with DOT. Uh, good, after, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Liam Davis, Baltimore City DOT. DOT stands by its bill report, which is no objection. Thank you. Uh, Let's go to the law department. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Lena DePetra from the law department. Um, we've reviewed the bill for, and um, we we uh, mostly agree with the planning department. Um, we feel we, there is, I don't know if um, planning mentioned the need for a parking variance. There's, um, there's four units and the law requires that there be a parking space per unit, one's parking space for each unit. So there are only two spaces that are um, mentioned in the planning commission report. So they'll need to add a variance for parking spaces. Um, in addition, the, um, and the um, planning commission uh, recited in their report the facts related to um, that have to be found related to a variance. Unfortunately, they they didn't say facts. They they said the standards that have to be applied and the facts that then have to be established to support those standards um, and the the report contained no facts to support the standards for a variance and there were minimal facts to support the standards for a conditional use so the council needs to make sure there's testimony um, that occurs at today's hearing that will um, satisfy that will support those standards for both the conditional use and the um, variance Whoops, can't hear you, Mr. Chair. So, yeah, yeah, I just, I just unmuted. So okay. we just make a motion to move the bill, move the finding of facts by the lead. You can't, you know, they're insufficient in the report. You need to get additional facts through testimony. So Councilman Pinker. Plus there needs to be an amendment for the parking. Right, 
Okay, but Councilman Pinkett, I think we've been through this. I just want to backpedal. Councilman Pinkett, he he can he can uh, do the, the, the sure. Yeah, yeah, he can fill in the blanks. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Thanks. Chair, Mr. Yeah, Chair, this is Councilman, the the applicant um, representative from the applicant will provide the testimony for the findings of facts and okay. um, testimony for the need for the amendment um, um, for the variance, the parking variance. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank, awesome. thank you, Councilman. Out of work. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else for the law department? No. No? No? Okay. Thank you, Alina. Uh, we will now go to HCD. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Stephanie Murdoch for the Department of Housing and Community Development. We stand by our report in support. Okay. BD, thank you. Uh, BDC? Good afternoon, Ira Cowler, Baltimore Development Corporation. We stand by our report in support of the bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, the fire department has no obje objection. Uh, Parking Authority of Baltimore City. Parking Authority does not oppose the passage of the bill. Okay, thank you. You say you do? You're not opposed, right? We, we don't oppose. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. So at this time, we will go to, uh, if none of my colleagues or committee members have a question, we'll go to public testimony. Let's start off with um, the applicant uh, who is going to uh, do the uh, finding of facts. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we have uh, Nate Prattle, who I believe is representing the applicant. Uh, Nate, go ahead. Yep. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in regards to this legislation. And my name is Nate Prettle uh, with the land use firm AB Associates. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. And I want to speak to two things. One, the all street parking, and I would uh, ask that the, count, uh, the committee adopt an all street parking variance. And just, but also note that there's a, a, the parking area is roughly 1,260 square feet. So in reality, the uh, they will park at least five cars, which was part of the agreement with the various neighborhood associations. Uh, Mr. French, in his testimony, is correct that you know, zoning will only count uh, two of these based on uh, the requirements in the code, but in reality, it will be at least five parking spots. So we do need the variance, but the parking area will provide the amount of parking as negotiated with the community association. And um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer in regards to the parking. Okay, you have to, okay. Um, and then I can speak to the findings of facts, which that's is- what, That's what, yeah, that's what we need. Speak on the findings sure, of- Sure, sure. So uh, the property is absolutely unique and particularly in that it is um, treated as a corner property. It has windows on the side, yet it is not on a right of way. It is adjacent to another tax lot, yet it still has windows on the side, which and corner properties uh, throughout the city are different, both in their construction as well as their use. They typically either will have a higher density or a commercial use in it. And the fact that we have these windows uh, lends itself uh, to multifamily uh, better than if there are no windows on the side, more access to light and air. So that speaks to the uniqueness. It's actually adjacent to the Dovco Cafe, which is a double lot and the first addressed uh, property on the 2500 block. So we have an end of group that is not really yet on a right of way. And so that's the uniqueness. The other aspect of uh, applying that to the requirements in the zoning code is that we're also uh, applying with CHAP standards. So we have two sets of regulations and, to, and the, the applicant is applying for historic tax credits. So both the uniqueness and the location of the structure along with complying the historic standards lends it to the uh, necessity for these variances. Okay, uh, any questions to the applicant? Let's let's go back to uh, Pete Elena from the uh, law department. I want to make sure the eyes are dotted. Are we good? Um, well, that's your. Sure. Uh, that definitely was uh, was uh, facts that were necessary. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, Matt, do we have any testimony? I could say I haven't, I haven't seen anything negative. Uh, the community associations, we got letters of uh, support. So let's go to uh, public audience. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't see anyone else in the uh, attendees with their hand raised and there are no callers. Uh, so, uh, just a reminder, if anybody does wish to testify, uh, please use the raise hand function. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Chair, I think that is uh, all of the public testimony. Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Councilman Dorsey, you had the floor, go ahead. Thank you, I just a question for the sponsor because I'm, uh, I'm a little confused. How many off-street parking spaces would be required for the number of units that will go into this uh, property? And how many are planned and how many are needed as a variance? Um, and I think Mr. French can chime in, but I think, it, I think it's four. Um, but because of the... Uh, Negotiations with the community, they were asking that the developer provide five. So, okay, so the the, the, law, the zoning code is, is a one to one requirement. So, four units equals four parking spaces, but there's an agreement to that there be five. And so, are we being asked to? Um, require that there be five or are they going to actually provide five and we just take it on good faith i'm just trying to understand martin can you can you answer councilman dorsey's question or concern okay i'll try <laughs> um this particular lot is a 20 foot wide lot the minimum standard for a parking space in the zoning code is nine feet wide so therefore they can get two spaces in coming off Morris Alley, which is behind this property, without anybody having to move another vehicle in order to make a parking space available. The zoning code does not recognize tandem parking spaces, which is basically uh, what apparently part of this plan may involve. We have not actually seen a parking plan for the rear yard. So they may have a diagonal system worked out. We don't know, we have not seen this. However, the zoning code does require one space for every dwelling unit, but it allows uh, for the first dwelling unit, which of course was original to the building, not to have a parking space because at the time the building was built and that dwelling unit was created, no parking off street was required by the zoning code. So therefore, for three additional units above the one unit that's originally there, they're required to provide three off street parking spaces. The property can only according to the simple the perpendicular to the alley formula, provide two spaces, which is why the Planning Commission, taking note of that, suggested that there be a variance of one parking space uh, provided in the bill. Hey, I'm sorry, so, did that? Well, uh, so, Mr. Chair, so my understanding, and this is, a per, this is a part of the law that I'm quite familiar with, um, and I appreciate Martin clarifying that, that the first unit is not required to have and each subsequent unit is required to have a space. So the law requires that there be three spaces and that they meet the standards set forth in the zoning code uh, as to the design for spaces. And since this property can only properly accommodate two parking spaces, the law requires that there be three, so we need to grant a variance of, all, of one space in order to be able to grant this conditional use legally. Correct. Am I correct on that with the law department? Um, yeah, I was un unaware of the, of the exception for one of the spaces due to the historical nature of the property, but Martin okay. says that's the case. I, I, so in order to legally be able to grant this conditional use, we must grant a variance yes. of At a reduction one. of one required parking space. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, any other questions or concerns because before we make a motion to move to finding of facts? No? Okay. Do I have a motion to move to finding of facts? 
So moved. That's Pinkett. Second. Second by who? Clark. Clark. All those in favor of the finding of facts say aye. 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 Those, those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The finding of facts. Now we will go on the amendments. Uh, motion to move the amendment. So moved. moved. A second. Second. Pinkett. Second. Clark, Clark. Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Clark. In favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Those, those opposed say nay. Uh, the ayes have it. Now we will move the bill favorable as amended. Do we have a motion to move the bill favorable as amended? So moved. Second. Moved Clark. by Councilwoman Pinkett. Second by Councilwoman Clark. Right your votes, yes. Snee. Snee. Snee is absent. Clark. Yes. Clark is yes. Costello. Yes. Costello is yes. Dorsey. Yes. Dorsey is yes. Middleton. Middleton. You wanna, yes. Are you there? You want to yes. say yes? Uh huh. Yes, Pinkett. Yes. Pinkett is yes. Uh, Councilman Robert Stokes, are you there? Stokes? Okay. Uh, he must still be at his meeting. Councilman Stokes called earlier and said he had a prior commitment. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six in the affirmative with two absent. This bill passes. As amended, and will come out at the next uh, council meeting. I want to thank all the members and the committee members for being present uh, at the hearing. This concludes City Council Bill 20-0560. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks.